let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Hmm. Well, 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 we back. Why? This is Terrence Gangster Williams, a.k.a. OG Giggity, a.k.a. Mr. Answer Right Back, a.k.a. The People's Champ. Guess what, y'all? I've been getting a lot of business since these clowns been want to play with me. Rip them. Sick with it. And most importantly, boosy boo. Let's get it, y'all. Let's, oh, I got a wire. I done got busted already. Wow. What's up, baby? You already know what time it is, man. Real life street stars. Real life in the building. Hey, man, before we get into it, brother, how's your Ramadan going? Oh, perfect, man. That, you know, um, Ramadan really gave me a chance to really think, uh, get myself together, become more humble, because during Ramadan you can't eat, you can't drink, so no sex, none of that stuff, you know. Um, so you can't help but to, be, to study and reflect on what's going on around you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's beautiful, you know, it, it, and, and it helps you to uh, appreciate the things that you don't have uh, when you really want it, you know, and then when you do get it. Now, uh, it seems like you've been especially tested during this time um, of reflection and uh, prayer. Uh, how has that been for you? Uh, and see, I've been doing it for years. Like, I, I started fasting in 1999, you know? Mm -hmm. So, my body already know, like, okay, you ain't getting no water, you ain't getting no food, you, ain't, you know, <clears throat> just stay focused, you know, pray, thank God you're here, you know, so... That's, it's easy for me. And you, you went in what, 97? When did you go in? Uh, 98. 98, 98. Right. But I went to the state in 95. So, question, you know, you just mentioned, uh, you know, you're doing these interviews, we got to mic you up, you know, you wearing a wire. A lot of people say, man, this boy, Terrence Gangster Williams, been wearing wires since the 90s. Have you ever had a wire put on you by any federal or police? In, have you ever wore a wire, ever? No. Um, especially in the 90s, um, think about it. I went to juvenile in March of 90 for armed robbery. Uh, and in 95, I went and did my state bid. So I didn't come to the feds in 98, and a dude wore a wire on me. That's how my, fed, my phone was tapped. My, beep, my beepers, where the beepers at? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but you know what I learned about the internet? Um, these days, people don't care to really research stuff. They don't care. They just like content. Um, they like a lot of gossip. They like the bull. Uh, our young generation just want to hear a good story. If it sounds like I can believe it, okay, I'm running with it. And then once Mr. Answer right back, answer back, you know they say, they hit me back. Man, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you're right, OG. Yeah, that's cool. So um, in this day and time, like I explain to people, when you get on this internet, you have to develop bulletproof emotions. Because they're gonna come for you. They're gonna come, they're gonna be trying to tear you down, they're gonna go try to dig up all kind of stuff. But you know, um, I'm the people's champ, man. How did you become the people's champ? I'm happy you say that. I'm happy you ask that. Um, because that's gonna be one of my one of my trivia questions when I give away my money when I get to the hundred thousand subscribers. Congratulations, anyway. by the way. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah. That's 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 a big that's a big accomplishment now. Mm -hmm. Um because when me when Boosie and I went at it, he tweeted about me on Twitter. So it was sent to me. Like I got a, I have a Twitter. I don't know how to work it. Um, I just used to go in, like I tried to go in and look at the poem. Um, <laughs> Twitter got the best poem, by the way. Yeah, they so, fooling on there. Yeah, I don't. So I didn't. I didn't know how to work the Twitter. Uh, so anyway, uh, the the um, the thing he tweeted, they sent it to me. And when they sent it to me, they was like, look and look at the comments. So a lot of the comments when he first sent it out, they was on my side. So I was like, oh, the people champ. Yeah. I said, man, the people like me, man. So yeah. at the end of the day, no matter what you say, how you try to, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, assassinate my character, I'm the people's champ. So I was like, yo, that's pretty cool. So I just took it and ran with it, and people be hitting me up now. Mr. Answer right back. You gonna answer this back? You gonna answer this back? Like I say, now it has become entertainment for everybody. Facts. Hey, he gonna answer right back. Yeah. So I got to. let's go to let's let's go through like this. Uh, when you hey, first before we even go to that, a hundred k. You about to touch 100K subscribers, man, for those. Because think about this, man. You, you've always been a hustler. 
right? Facts. So did you when you got out of jail, did you see YouTube as the hustle? Because for you to hit the ground running and run up 100K in like damn near less, less than a year, a year? Well, next month or we'll be a year. Yeah, so to do that, bro, you know how long it took us to hit 100K? <laughs> it took us years <laughs> I, to hit that. That's, that's crazy, because I remember when I first came on here, y'all was at 200,000. Yeah, yeah, for some strange reason. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, yeah. but... um. Now we have 415 on these niggas. <laughs> yeah, I, and, and I was like, man, I like that. I like to see y'all grow. Yeah. I can't wait to see y'all in the millions. Because, Talk um, about it. Because a lot, of, a lot of legends has come through here and been on this... Wait, we got this straight the last time. What is this, a sofa couch? Oh man, it's listen, we call it the couch. Okay. But you know, the, the dictionary might say different. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, it's a blessing, you know. Um, I didn't now when I was in prison, I wanted a YouTube channel, but one of the uh, one of my homies was like, Man, you got to be on it every day so you can't get one. So now I, I felt like he was trying to hold me back. I was like, What do you mean I can't because I didn't know what was going on out here. So um, when I got out here, I asked two different guys to make me a YouTube channel because I know now this is how you can make money. So, one was dragging me, one was doing it, but then when he finally did it, I was happy where I got my channel. Now, I don't really know how to work this, I don't know what's really going on. So I had one of my people to start looking into the stuff. And when she looked into it, she was like, well, who is this person, he in your ass in? I was like, what that is? Oh, that's where your money going. I was like, yep. oh, oh, he tried to get me? But I'm happy he tried in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And he worked me down the line. So. Uh, you know, I figured that out, then I started learning, started studying, and I started asking questions. Because for those, if you don't know, you have to ask. So, you, you know, a lot of people be scared to ask questions. You know, I'm one of the ones, but I don't know, so I'm going to ask. Yeah, I'm going to ask. I'm going to get the information. What's going on? How you do this? You know, so um, I found that out, and um, I just started putting my content out, putting my content out. And um, when Boosie threw me the alley hoop, that was just, it was curtains from there. And... He constantly doing it for me, and I just oh yeah, I'm like that. I thought he might leave you alone by now, but shit, yeah, he like come on, hey. So real quick, let's go back before Boosie Vlad uh, mm -hmm. got you, and I'm just curious with the way you got out, and as far as seeing the free world, you know, the doors open, you out of prison. Why would you even want to go to Vlad? Like just to, you know, he's gonna ask you certain questions. Like what was in your mindset of what did you want out of that? Well, first of all. It wasn't my plan to go to Vlad. I never heard of Vlad. I didn't know nothing about Vlad. Oh, like, I was in prison. Like when, all right, when I was incarcerated, I have never used a cell phone until, well, I take that back. I did use a cell phone. The cell phone, I used a cell phone in, I want to say, 07. So the one I had was like, you flip up. Um, the guy had ran out of minutes, so I had to press some buttons to get some minutes on there. Oh, yeah. I used that one time in 07. Yeah, prime code. Uh, oh no, Bronco was my time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then I used a cell phone like a month before I got out of prison. Mm -hmm. But like, um, I had I had a Facebook page before I had somebody hook that up for me. But as far as um, all the social media sites and knowing how to YouTube all this go, I didn't I didn't know nothing about that. I never looked into that stuff. I never wanted to get caught with a phone because I didn't want to get a write up. Mm -hmm. Because when you file most of the court, they look at what you're doing in prison. So um, I stayed away from a lot of that stuff, you know, so YouTube, all this stuff was new to me when I got out. And like I said, I never heard of Vlad. So when uh, Queen France brought his name up, she brought, mentioned Vlad, uh, uh, Big Facts, uh, Say Cheese, a lot of these big shows. So I started looking into them, and I'm seeing they having a lot of uh, subscribers. So I was like, all right, cool. But I still didn't believe that I was going to go on there. And then um, she reached out to him. She reached out to a few people. He wanted to hit back fast. Um, so he had called me that Sunday, and he told me, he said, hey, I see this, 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 this going on. She, I, I didn't pull your paperwork. I didn't look at all this stuff here. Do you mind talking about it? I said, man, my life is an open book. I don't have a If you want to talk, let's get it. Once you pay me, I'll work for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's go. You know what I'm saying? So um, we talked about it. And, 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 and I want to bring this up again because a lot of people... They can't stand Vlad, they call him the police, they say this and this, but I'm gonna say this. I don't fault Vlad, Vlad is a hustle. Vlad do just like anybody else would do. When I, once I get you on my uh, program, my show, it's up to you to answer. Because when he asks them questions, we can always say, oh man, I wanna talk about that, oh man, next question. People jump out there and they entertain it, but then people get mad with Vlad, but guess what? Majority of the YouTube go to Vlad. It's so many hood dudes love Vlad. That, that's how I be finding They hit me. Oh, boy, I got this story on Vlad. Yeah, but I'm like, how you know about Vlad? What you doing on Vlad? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they all call him the police of fair, but they all be on Vlad. So, um, you know, when I went on Vlad, and let me tell you what's crazy. I was, I was 
hoping to at least get 100,000 views. So when he first put it out, and it was going like 50, uh, my partner Sean, he out of uh, Atlanta, he owned um, the Inside Source uh, YouTube channel with Cali Chill be on. So um, me and him was talking, going back and forth, he was, you know, letting me know about the YouTube stuff. So it was at 50, I said, man, it'd be cool if I get to 100,000. He said, man, you'll be at that by the night. I was like, are you tripping? He don't know what you're talking about. You know, because I'm, I don't, because you know, I'm not, I'm new to this stuff. So as we going, he hit and then got to 100,000. Then it, I said, like, whoa. I said, I would like 200,000. It was 203. It's, it's, I'm, I'm at work writing this stuff down, right? So um, I started re I said, man, this man ain't got over 5 million views on this stuff. This boy came up good, you know? And now the world know about my story, know who I am. So um, that was a good stepping stone. Then when she reached out to Real Life Streets, I was like, Real Life. So she showed me the people who was on Real Life. And I was like, boy, there's been some legends on there. I said, you, you better get me over there. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep in mind, I'm a person that comes from the streets. Um, did a lot of dirt in the streets, went and did federal time, um, my people celebrities. So for me to come home, <laughs> Red Light Street Star, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like, oh, I'm going Red Light Street Star, or they're going to have, you know? So when I got over there, I was like, oh. And then when I seen the staff and seen the love, I was like, this home. Yeah. This home, you know? Yeah. But um, it's been an exciting journey. And, yeah. it, it, and, and it's just, and it's really just starting. No facts. 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 And you and you look younger. You start to look. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, we 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 you discussed Vlad a little bit about how um, certain individuals they go on there and you know he's not forcing anybody. But do you feel like at some point uh, people who have access to the to get put this information out of the world has a responsibility? Meaning that because there was a young man who was just killed. Days before, after Vlad, BTB Savage, to be exact, after um, mm -hmm. releasing his story on Vlad. Um, and it was pretty graphic. Uh, but do you think he, if Vlad would have been like, hey, bro, maybe if you leave some pieces out, this might save your life? Because a lot of individuals do go on Vlad and then either they go to the feds or lose their life behind what they say on these interviews. It's not Vlad's fault. Let me say this. It's the guy's fault. I just did a piece on BTB Savage. Mm -hmm. First of all, after his girlfriend did what she did, right. this man take a picture on the crime scene. He did do that. You sending a message to this man, family, friends, and homies, like, yeah, we crush your man in here. Don't play with me. You yeah. standing in this blood. So you asking for this. Yeah. So now you go to Vlad, and the only reason why Vlad called you on it is because of that. Yeah. So you had a chance to be like, nah, you know, oh, we got, we, we did this, we, we didn't get charged, we got away with this, so let's be humble and, uh, and let's stay focused. So, um, you go on tour. <laughs> so, yeah. what, what, and back in, back in your day, what kind of repercussion would that have been? If there was a, if there was an internet, it, like, if there was anything like this back in the day and someone took a picture like that, minus the Vlad interview, they just posted a picture like that on the internet. On Polaroid. You got to be at, at their parents' doorstep that night. Because now you're letting the world know, yeah, we killed your man, and I'm standing right where we killed the man. It's like totally disrespect. Um, I'm happy they didn't have that back in the day when we was out, because, man, we, a lot of them might have a death penalty now. You know, because we was wilding back then, and now with the social media now, man, it's off the chain. But I just think the, uh, the brother, but here's the thing. When I look at it uh, from my religious uh, standpoint, we, we believe in the color of a law. You know, uh, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you know what I'm saying? Um, God already had that predame for him. So um, he just, you know, you, know you, you got your wheel, you got your way, so he just went on and took that path. Because he could have took another route, but he took this path. And, um, and, the, and, the, and the guys um, who seen this, they was they, they had to be some real steppers because he mentioned like you know if they uh, he you know Vlad actually do he feel like I'm gonna be retaliated he was like I'm not leaving the city you know I'm gonna stay here you know what I'm saying so um, he, he he decided to stay you know but he's got to be on point you know now I got a question with with um, his girlfriend actually carrying out the you know execution mm -hmm. um, is he is claiming that work should he have done that. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't really, I mean, right. his girlfriend did that. <clears throat> yeah, you could claim that. Let me tell you why. Because of this. The guy was attacking him. 
So, hey, shoot him. He, he, he coaching her with the dude. Yes. So, by law, they both would be co-defendants because y'all was here. But they was in the right. They was protected themselves. But, however, this happened on in my house or wherever it happened at, you know what I'm saying, on, on, on my ground, on my territory. So, yeah, he can speak about that. However, you got to understand, for, it, for every action, there's a reaction. There you go. And, unfortunately, them dudes spent back. Whoever spent back, they spent back, you know. Yeah. But. The one thing I got from that Vlad interview towards the end, he said, Vlad asked him, are you about to lay low or move, he get, get no. out of the city? He said, no, I'm right here. Right. Um, even when you was moving around, and did you say, I'm going to stay here in the in the mail for staying in the magnolia did you say like let me let me leave town for a little bit after some got hot and i'll come back later were you just like i mean i'm right here i mean yeah i always moved that's when, when i found out my mother got shot i was in demar i was about to go in the club and i was partying damn damn i was out of town so i had to walk out of the club my people going off Hold up, let me get the beaver uh, the beaver going off they be like get out you where you still get that beaver it's your <laughs> Jumping. Still work. So the beeper's going off, right? Wait, it still work? Like, they still hit you on the beeper? <laughs> like, we call you right now. We can hit you on the beeper. Nah, I'm just capping. Because uh, I don't want nobody to tell me. Don't beep me. Don't beep me 911. Yo, you. people would get in my uh, Instagram and be like, oh, give, give me your beeper number. You know, and I'm good. That should have gone off all night, nigga. <laughs> yeah. no. So, um, I would, like, I used to get on the Greyhound bus, man. I would give me a pillow, a blanket, my headphone, my tape re uh, recorder. And just ride like I went to DC. I went wow. to New York. I used to just ride because I used to be like, you never know you're gonna you're gonna go to jail. And then another thing I used to say, well, uh, keep me from getting shot or killed this day or whatever. I'm gonna go in on and kite out. You know what I'm saying? Just go look at the world. You know. Um, so I used to always move around. Just like when I first come home, when I went back to when I first got out, I went to New Orleans first. Mm. When I see how that was looking, uh, all my buddies dead in jail, or I'm not kicking with them no more. You know, I don't have the the new thing they got out there. So I felt vulnerable. I was like, oh, no, this ain't going to work. Man, that's I got, to, I got to go somewhere else, regroup, get myself together, yeah. build up. You know how you go, and once you, once you go to war, you lose your arm, you got to regroup. You got to regroup, yeah. Like, yeah. Fall, back, back, fall back, fall right. back. Hey, man. <laughs> Retreat. Retreat. So man. You got to live this shit another day. I got to ask you, um, you know, lastly with that, as far as with the BTB situation, um, uh, have you yourself ever underestimated your ops as far as not know who that person was and not know if he really had like, you know, he was that dude in the streets and you just like said, man, I'm just, you know, he ain't nobody. Have you ever had a situation where you underestimated the opposition? Yeah, the guy who killed Sterling. We um, underestimated him. We didn't think he was, but you know, I'm learning a cow to kill. You know, um, a lot of, either if you push in the corner, so it's not like, you know, in, my, in our mind was, if you're not a real step and your name not ringing, we don't care nothing about you. Mm. But it's always somebody waiting on the side, I'm waiting to jump out there to let you know, yeah, I, I will work, you know. Mm. And that was one of those situations. And I still was taking them for granted after that. You know, like, okay, I'll get to you. I'll get to you later because I had other stuff that was more important. Mm. But now, you know, and you killed my best friend, but I'm like, I, I, I'll get at you later. You know, yeah. so that was somebody that we took for granted. Definitely, definitely. Um, you know? Now, we now, got... Oh, now, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. now, I got to ask, man, because... Uh, and I'm going to shout out the, uh, the Ray Ray report. You know what I'm saying? Ray Report. Ray Report. Ray report. Ray Ray. Yeah, yeah. Ray Ray Report. Ray, Ray Report. No, the Ray Report. No. And talk to him about the Ray Report. If boys don't know in the, uh, the New Orleans area, Louisiana yeah. area, the Ray, a lot of good how important life. the Ray Report is because they go through there all they go day. through there. I oh. got a documentary on it, though. Um, <laughs> Ray Report. Oh, I don't know if you want to say his name, but he's from the Melfi Mean Project. Yeah. Oh. This okay. is his channel. Yeah. Right. So that's why he get a lot of the inside gossip you know get this you know and you know he gonna be biased because y'all notice he ain't put me on this show yet you right. know what i'm saying but we talk now don't get okay, we talk okay. we do talk i'm gonna get we do talk when we kick it and stuff we just trying to iron it out but um are people waiting for me to go on there it's like it's he know what it's gonna do so much content around you yeah. as a fact you know what i'm saying my his my name all through his <laughs> channel but um he's a good guy real cool guy bro very respectful one thing about he's very respectful um but he's just providing content for us. You for know, sure. Red Report. Um, but I wish I could say his name, but I don't, you know, he wasn't the one, like, he be, man, because he don't like a lot of the... Yeah, it, you know, keep it at the Red Report. <laughs> yeah, you know, he don't like a lot of... <laughs> Call Mr. Red Report. You know, because a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people be after him. But, like, it's, it's like, he like the lower version of Vlad. They go off for him, right? But I'd be like, this is the purpose of us getting into YouTube. Uh, you know, to provide content for you all. You all come and view it. Leave your comments. 
And then that's it, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, the Red Report, bro, New Orleans champ. So when you when you see a title like um, Ripper details how and why he killed Hot Boy Sterling, like when you see a title like that, uh-huh. does that do something to you? Does it make you feel any type of way? Like we're starting to see like real gangsters like pretty much give it up on YouTube, and it's like I don't even know how that <laughs> how we got to this point, but. When you see just that title, like, damn. <laughs> like. The reason, let me tell you why I, I, this internet stuff don't get to me, or, or people in general don't get to me. Sterling, Dooney, Mosquito, my best friend, the original Hot Boys, right? Yeah. We crushed a lot of people. We done a lot of dirt. So now when somebody come and say, yeah, I did this to him, I'd be like, he really, yeah, he did do that, you know, um, but. It don't get me upset, you know, I don't, because my thing is this, like I said, I've left the game alone. So if someone pulls me back in the streets, then I'm out there head first and it's like, I have to make a movie. So everybody that got away with a lot of stuff in my past, I got to go back and revisit that now because I'm back out here now. So I would prefer to leave it alone and I just think back on, when somebody break up one of my friends' name, I think about all the good time, all the stuff we did, all the dirt we did, I'd be like, man. And I just smile, and I just be like, and then, but now I got a face and a voice with you, the one who really killed my friend. Did you did you know that prior to the video dropping, or was it? By new, what? Did you know that Ripple, quote unquote, allegedly, yeah. was the one? Yeah, okay. I knew who it was. Okay, so did you know? Did, did you know the day that it happened? Who it was, or like how did that? No. Work? Okay. See, this is the thing. He 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 did a lot of lying, but he kept, and I understand the social media, and with Rare Report uh, following. So um. I come in the project, I had a green Q45 with bow to the man on the license plate. I come in the, in the project, I see Sterling sitting on the porch. And I, I remember, like, uh, the weekend before that, we, was, oh, like, we used to always go out to Biloxi Beach and hang out, like have little parties to get together, the Magnolia. So the guys at the uh, Idleville project came out there. Now, there was already a little beef going on with Mosquito with something dealing with that Idleville project because he was living back there. So... They come, they pull up, and then uh, I pull up in the parlor. I see them looking across the street where the beach and stuff at. So I see this this uh, known stepper named Mums. I was like, man, what's up? They're like, nah, man. Uh, we, we see. I said, oh, Stolen over there, cause Mums and Stolen real tight. Uh, I see women go get them, so I can, cause I know Stolen come over and talk to them. They know they good. They come over there, you know, with the, by the Magnolia. So I go get Stolen. By the time I come back, they was gone. They must have <coughs> trusted or whatever. Now bring you back up to speed. So now when I come to the project. I see started on the pool, I'm like, I said, man, what's up, you wanna go to, on Canal Street, go to Full Lock and get some shoes, some tennis shoes? Like, yeah, let's go. So we jump in the car. Before we get to Canal Street, we go to this around this hood called Philip and Cloud. So we was like, you know what? We're gonna get them to pay for our shoes. So uh, we get out, man, give me 20 dollars, hit everybody, 20, get 20, hit everybody for money, get the money, get the money, get the money. So now we ride, right? I think it's around summertime, because I remember saying, man, it's too hot to be landing somebody's graveyard. Now, when we get to Canal Street, I was like, man, you want to go on the Iverville Project? Go, go holler at Mumsy, because the Iverville Project is like a block behind Canal Street. <clears throat> so I started like, yeah, let's go. Like I said, we downtown. We don't got no beef with nobody in the Iverville Project. We never you know, violated nobody in this project at the time. So we go back there. We see Mumsy. We park, get out the car, stand up, we talking. Mumsy here. I'm standing right here. Sterling, like right here with his back. Mumsy and Sterling facing me, actually, and I'm right here. My car right here. It's a store right here behind us. And it's this girl from out the, from out the <clears throat> Nelfamine project. She's obsessed with me. And we, we've had sex a few times. So um, she like, give me a ride uptown. I was like, all right, sit over there. We, gonna, we got you. So she sat over on these steps. Now where she's sitting at, it's like a, like, well, she can sit right here in the building right here. So if you walk past, she going to see you. If you don't look to the left, you're not going to see her. But she's going to see you. So... As we over this way, stand up on the sidewalk talking, the guy who we know as, he was called Skip back then, they turned in the rip. Coming up the sidewalk. But now he's putting his handkerchief around his face, he got a hat on. So me and Sterling look at each other, we look at Mumsy, because Mumsy just telling us, like, this our project ain't nothing gonna happen to you back here. All right. And we both don't have guns on us. The guy coming. So now he start reaching in his back. So we looking. The girl said, y'all better run, that boy got a gun. 
I love, oh, let's go, time to go. Right, take out. I run around this driveway, hit a shot. Bang. Keep going, go through this, they got a hole in the fence, go to the hole in the fence, run across the street. They got a police station right there, I see the police. I say, hey, give me a ride back in the present, man. My friend just got shot back here. And McCoskey back here. So the police, all right, he, he come with some excuse. So they go back there, but I walk back, go across the street, go back in the cut. When I go back in the cut, right where I ran, that stutter was running at. And he's laying on a, in a driveway, and the girl who I was supposed to bring up time, she's holding him in her arms. And he like, <gasps> and I'm like, and I see those shots in the back of his head, though. So that's why when um, Rip gave the story that, uh, yo, this was great. It, he said that you ran with a piece. Yeah, but not on that. Back up. First, he say, he say it happened Saturday at a dice game in the Magnolia. He say Sterling, come behind him, grab him. He won four thousand. He mentioned how much money he had in these pockets and what have you, right? Problem with that is his his his, his count was off. But that ain't important. My question to him and to a lot of people who listen to the story was this: See, nobody never asked these kind of questions, right? is how one man, now it, it would have been more believable have had he said Sterling grabbed him from behind and I went in his pocket and, and took the money. But what he did, he said was Sterling come behind him, grabs him and go in his pocket. So now if I come and bear hug you, now I gotta release one of my arms to go in your pocket. What are you doing? Now you free too, so now you can grab your pocket and stop the man or how you gonna just stand, let one a man hold you, you don't spin around, you don't, come on man. So now, okay, let's keep going. So he go with that story. Then he said that Sunday, him and Sterling had a fight at the detour. Yeah. Okay, the problem with that was, Sterling didn't go to detour that Sunday, there wasn't no fight then. The fight happened, all right, Sterling was killed in 96. The fight happened in 1994, when he talking about it in front of the detour oh, with that, the Gotti boys. Two so, years ago. So, but think about this. The world don't know this. YouTube don't know this because this is a story he's narrating. This is a story he's telling, right? So um, as all this going on, when they take him to the hospital, whatever. I mean, yeah, they took him off in Amalan. We found out he's dead. Now, a lot of people in the Mac know you get worried. They come up, they come downtown. So I'm in the driveway. I'm crying. They like, can't you don't cry? Let them see you cry. That's a sign of weakness. I say, no, that's a sign of terror about to happen. I don't believe in how people, I always go against, when people come up with, don't do this, don't do that, I always go against that. Mm -hmm. I let them know, yeah, y'all see my pain, now y'all gonna feel the same pain. Mm -hmm. We think it's the Automobile Project, because it happened back here, right? So, I had told the story before with me, Stone, George Hayton, uh, he was a known stepper, kid to tell Hayton, he's deceased now, uh, Disco, wow, all four of these guys deceased. Stone, Disco, they brothers, oh, wow. cup, you know, cup with those three of them, and me, it was four of us that went back there. I was dressed like a woman at this time, so because I'm thinking that it's the it's the eye review that killed Sterling. We go back there. All of us got guns. All of us shoot one time, all our guns jam. Yeah. Yeah. Them boys came out with choppers and we had to get from back there. God damn. Yeah, so um, this is how I found out that it was the guy I ripped that did this. I'm in a white lessons this day. And I'm, I'm going back around Fiddler and Clara around this neighborhood right out the Magnolia. So when I get on uh, first and Clara, that's where they set at. Now I keep going, then I turn left on Philip. Then when I turn left on Willow, as now I'm facing the Magnolia Project. So as I'm driving up toward Willow, I'm about to turn left again on First Street because I'm just going around in a circle, right? Yeah. So this is a good example right here. This Willow Street right here. So as I'm turning, you know when your car turns, you can look back and see who's behind you right here. True. So as I turn right here, I see my people coming up the sidewalk with guns in their hand. I'm like, what? They pointing, right? So now the horn blow. I see a red truck. It's skipping the truck. I say, uh, what's up? He said, uh, you know, I'm the one that killed Sterling. Just like I was like, oh, you the one. I was like, uh, well, what that was behind? He said, uh, he stepped on my friend's shoe in the detour, and they got it, they had words, they got it. I said, so you killed my friend behind something petty like that? He was like, like, yeah, man. He said, but man, I, I want to talk to you. So I'm like, this guy got to be crazy. Like, all right, so, but I'm telling my people, y'all chill out because they coming up the walk, coming up the sidewalk with guns. And I don't want them to take a pop shot at this man and miss him and then spook him because for this man to follow me and then want to talk to me, 
he, he, I don't think he took his medicine that day. <laughs> so, uh, but the story he gave, I liked it because but it, it, any street person or anybody with, with, with common sense, because common sense is free, all you gotta do is use it. There you go. The man said he up the chopper and said, uh, you got something to do with that? And he said, I said, yeah, okay, well, it's up now, but we need to talk. So you mean to tell me you just killed a notorious person, you followed another notorious person with a chopper, you up the chopper, you tell everybody, tell your people to stop. You tell me, yeah, all right, y'all stop. I tell them, y'all stop. Now you ask me, do I got something to do? You just killed my best friend. Yeah, I, got, I tell you, yeah, but you got a chop out and you say, all right, we need to talk. Yeah. You don't let loose and you know. <laughs> but like I said, it's the internet. They love stories. So, but some people peeped it, you know, it was a bunch of bull. But what I learned, this is what he did. And he was smart. He looked at all my story because his brother been on for two years. He'd been on for some years too. Mm -hmm. So now they, they check it out my story, they dissecting the story. Okay, I'm gonna put myself here, I'm gonna put here, I'm gonna take this. And he came up with a good story. But, uh, but the problem was, um, like I tell people, when you say stuff, you do stuff, you gotta think, well, if I do this, then what's gonna happen with this? Or how would this sound? You know? Nice. It just was a, it just was a bunch of bull because if you gonna shoot and you know I'm a known killer and you go ask me, do I got something to do? I'm telling you, yeah, you got a chop out and you got me right here and you don't cut loose. That's yeah, right. You faking, man. But <sighs> um, yeah, he came out with a good story and uh, it just gave me uh, content to feed back off it, you know? Yeah, and I'm just curious, why you, you said you didn't have, uh, for you and Sterling, um, y'all didn't have y'all pieces on y'all. Well, why didn't y'all? Bro, we, like I explained to a lot of people, bro, a lot of people tell you this. I used to, it, it was like, when I was with the Cattle Project, it'd be time I won't have my gun on me. I just was like comfortable. I thought I was bad. I just thought like a lot of people was really scared of me. Just from just seeing you. Yeah, like, and not yeah. knowing that, just like you would step, they gonna step. You know what I'm saying? But like I had a collagen bag on and the collagen bag used to blow up and you couldn't control it. So people always thought I was strapped, right? So I used to get by a lot of time with that. And sometimes, bro, to be honest with you, police was so hot on us, you'd be like, man, I don't feel like going to jail for no gun. And I'd be like, I know the police gonna be around or somebody, something, gonna, you know, but I used to take a lot of stuff for granted, bro. A lot of stuff. Man. Like, when I look back on that, I'd be like, man, God bless you, put you here for a reason. You know, because a lot of time I wouldn't be strapped. Hold on. You had a you had a collapse to me back? Yeah. Whoa, what? I mean, talk. Oh, you got stabbed, bro? No, not, was that from the stabbing or No, that was from when I got shot up. Yeah, shot, yeah. yeah I got shot. hit 94. Bro, so talk about that, because I got homeboys that, like, had to wear a bag, and they're like, you be thinking like, why didn't that change? Why that should change the direction of your life, really? No, indeed, man. That put me in the direction where I was going to go harder, because now whoever put this on me, they gotta wear this, either this or worse. You gotta keep in mind, man. We were teenagers and young, and our mindset was on go, all gas, no brakes. So now, um, I like I would say this: I was shocked because when they hit me, they hit me in my project. Mm -hmm. I got hit on the old side of the project. I'm from the new side, and then guess what? I had just left a Mac 11 in the house. I, told my, I had just left my gun in the house, uh, walked this girl to the bus stop, and got dark. And I'm thinking, I made my project. Nobody not gonna touch it. Nobody not gonna dare come back here and touch me. Right. And that boy came with that 40, and he went to work. And I was wondering, when they gonna stop shooting? And I'm just trying to feet don't feel me, and I'm trying to get somewhere again. And I fell down, and he stood over me. And I, when I fell down, I say, I'm saying to myself, I can't lay here because we had a thing the hot boy, we had a thing, when somebody falls, you got a dog him. You got to close their coffin. So I'm thinking now I'm, I'm on this ground, he's going to dog me. I can't go out like this. So when I look up at him, he, we looking at each other's face. And he shot again in the, the fire with my face. So I jump up and he look at me and I look at him. And he turn around, take out running that way. I ran in the alley and I go back to this light-skinned guy standing by the door. I was like, hey man, let me they just shot. Somebody just shot me up. He said, I ain't crazy, you come back here and shoot me. And he ran out that alley, he left me. I was like, but I didn't know he was on crack back then, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, this other guy, uh, Grandpa, let me in his house. And uh, I was about to sit on his bed. He said, don't sit on the bed. By the time I sit, I jumped up. It was red stuff on his bed. Because I had got hit in the back, back here, in the lower part of my back. and came on my side. So, um, and I got hit in the buttocks. I, mean, I got hit in my top buttocks, the left side up here. It went through, shot a piece of my bladder, and came on my right thigh right here. Um, so that's what caused me to fall, too. So um, when I, as soon as I sat down in the chair, Big G, he's deceased now, and Mosquito come back there yelling for me. I said, I'm right here. I come up, I got up, walk out, put my arms around them. That's when all this stuff just went dead. So they had spread the rumor that uh, I was either paralyzed or they said my leg had got cut off. That's the rumor had spread around that fast. Stone, who the internet 
um, was it this female try to kick? I started it, the rumor. But Stone, the one that pulled up in his uh, black bravado, they threw me in the back seat and brought me to the hospital. So the rumor was Stone shot you. You know what I'm saying? So people start, man, how you? Stone, the one gave the nickname Little Gangster in Juvenile Jail. So now they're like, how you feel that your best friend, your home, somebody you look up to shot you? So, but the thing was this, I had started the rumor, like, man, it was Stone had to shoot me because I was still in his coke. And you had homies called her from jail and people know, and he knew this because he knew my homegirl that I used to go drop it all to, she was good with selling the drug. And he knew the color coke he had, he knew I would hit it. So it was like he was giving me pass at the pass, right? And, and, and then when people would speak on it, I was like, man, Come on, man, this man raised you, this man gave you the name, took care of you, showed you love, and this is how you repay him, you're taking a man. And I wasn't taking no three, four grams, I was taking kilos, hitting him for it, you know what I'm saying, because he used to get a lot of them, we were young. So um, I spread the rumor that, you know, he did this. Now, uh, some people took it, some people like, nah, and then people who ran away knew because he was in the courtyard with my homeboys and homegirls, and then he the one bring me, so, so you telling me this man, Shoot you, got a chance to shoot you, run back in the project, change up clothes, whatever, jump in the truck, and hurry up and get you to the hospital. That's a bad boy. It can be done now. It can be done. But I, as I'm hearing this stuff, and as I'm talking, I'm like, that's a movie. I can put this in my movie, right? <laughs> so, um, you no. Know, and um, when I got hit up, when I, when I come out of surgery, I opened my eyes, this stone and his first lady, his oldest baby mother. Uh, his oldest daughter, baby mother, Lisa Pugh. They standing right beside the bed. First thing he asked me, you want some Jabos? You want some polo? And I'm, I shook my head, yeah, because he knew I to love them polo with Jabos and ballots, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, they smiling, and they laughing about it. So it's like, if this man, you know, and like I said, I started the rumor. But I'm like, if this man really shot you, then now he's playing a hell of a role. Right. But I would say this, because the night I got shot, him and OG Booby Black retaliated. Right. Now, once they retaliate, we're in the hospital, right? I'm in the hospital, another guy in the hospital. Stone and OG Booby Black go visit this guy. The guys that wanted to take the hit to kill OG Booby Black come visit me. Oh, shit. But before that, they go to the elevator because they was Stone and OG Booby Black was going down to do something. The guy come up the elevator, the one who was supposed to take the hit to kill OG Booby Black, they up guns in the hospital. Yeah. My mother come out and y'all stop that because the two guys that came back that they hit OG Booby Black, um, back in 92, they put me on game with the guy at the tent wall trying to kill me. But he was standing on the corner, he was faking, he got a gun out, he pump faking. So he gave me a chance to leave, I came back, I hit him up. He survived it. But one of them guys hit him with me. So um, now I guess they felt that because we aided you in this crime back in 92, now it's 94, it's a hit out on Booby. We need to crush him and we need your help. So I got love for Boo Boo with my homie. So I'm like, Boo Boo, they come back and hit you. So now be the double cross, but the triple cross. But then I wound up getting hit up that next day. They, they Boo and them messed up. These guys, I got these two guys in the circle waiting. The lights go out. So I walk off. And my homie, what, what them dudes at the mail doing back here? I said, don't worry, everybody get dealt with. Watch this. So you got OG Booby Black, Big G. Mosquito run, hiding behind the building. One got a Mac 90, one got a Mac 11, one got a 9 with a cliff hanging out. They come from behind the building, shooting long This is all this, and the dudes get away. They know I set them up now. The next day I get hit up. The same gun they showed me that they was going to hit OG Booby Black with, that's the same gun I got hit with. And that's how I got the colostomy bag. Um, so I kept going back and forth to jail, back so I could never get a chance to get it reversed. I had got so comfortable with the bag, the stuff going in the bag, I had to sit on the toilet. I, didn't, I was like, I had it for like a year and 11 months. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I didn't want to get it reversed. Then I was like, okay, well, I ain't got to worry about sitting on the toilet. No, I would say this, that thing used to, I had one that OG Booby Black had one, right? Mm -hmm. Man, we would go in the club, bro, and we would let that, bro, that stuff is summing up. Oh, man. And when them girls walk by who think they too much and don't wanna, really want to speak, or we let that and point at them, Oh, that ain't up. Yeah, that's it. We get them the charge. So there's two bags side by side letting it out. Letting it, you know, because you, when you got a colliding bag, you can't control when you pass gas or when you defecation because you can't control that. So um, the, the thing I didn't like about it, a few, a few times it bust on me, so now you got stuff coming all down your legs. You know? But, um, yeah. So when I finally got out of jail, I got it, it got, they reversed it in 96. Yeah. 
But let's get back to the topic at hand because there was a hell of a story with this ripper guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, quick question: You ever have a gun jam on you? Yes, I just spoke about that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Get back to the story at hand. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue your story. So, um, so now this guy want to meet with me, and um, I let I let uh, I let Hot Beasel know. I said, Hey, I know who did it, where he live at. That's not the Ville. It's uptown, the mill. He got a family member, he got a baby mother live back there. So me and him got a bet going on, you know, a friend of the bet, like an outfit, who gonna get to this guy first? I got a rental car in my name. So I let Blabber drive the car. Cause I don't wanna give it to Hot, cause I know what he gonna try to do. And this car in my name, you could, he don't care, he gonna try to work. He wanna revenge this bad. He tell Blabber, come on back, let me go see my son. They go back to the mail. He spot the guy on the pay phone. Problem is, I think Blab was driving at the time. Yeah, Bla no, I think Hot was driving. But Blab was a left hand shooter, whatever the case may be. So Hot jump out the car, get the and it out at the dude, the dude get away. The dude tell, Hot got charged with that. Now, I don't know what the guy was in jail for, but he in jail now. So I got a homie named Doug Lou, he deceased now, and two of the homeboys, they all in the jail together. At this time, my phone is tapped. So now, the feds listening to my conversation. Doug Lou called, hey man, Skip in here. Hey, I put him on the phone. Okay. So what's up, man? So hot, get on the phone. Why you told on me? Gang, uh, uh, Skip, like, man, a ripper. Gangster said that was over with. No, man, you killed stuff, that ain't over with. Now they on a phone that's being listened to by the government. The federal government, they listen to these conversations. I still got my phone, uh, uh, recording paperwork, I got all that. Y'all gonna put all this in my documentary. So they all been back and forth about what happened. So, so Hot let them know, nah, that ain't, that ain't over with. You killed Sterling, I'm trying to see you. All right, cool. Now, when I get arrested by the feds, the feds, the, all, all law enforcement, whatever, go arrest him. <clears throat> now, mind you, when you got a, a murder charge, only state police gonna come arrest you. The reason why the feds got involved because my phone was tapped. So. You know, Sterling, a known stepper, been through a lot of stuff, so Fed's looking at it like he was gonna be one of my co-conspirators, you know, my co-defendant. So now you kill this man, whatever. Now, um, in 98, I got arrested. 99, me, Jesse K, just a step out the Kelly or old head. Try to break out of, uh, just like what y'all would call county jail, we have parish, right, our jail. Um, we on max security. While we on max security, it's the brother, who called himself now, uh, his name was Cleve. His name is Cleveland. He started nicknaming himself Sick One when he went to jail. He got this white guy, Sick One, so he took that man's name and ran with it. So now Sick One come up there and we talking, right? Now, once I go to the Fed, I'm telling baby, now look man, you need to get all the homie, get everybody together, stop all this wall, this bull crap. Birdman, get everybody together, get on the bus, they go on tour. While they out in Atlanta, I call. Sick one there, put him on the phone, we talking. This man wrote me a letter while I was in jail, sent me pictures. Everything fine, right? Now, he get up, now on the, you know what's crazy? I wish I would've kept that letter and thing to show his address where he wrote me, sent me pictures and everything. But, like I say, people playing for the camera now. now I didn't open that lane wide open, man, for N.O. to tell their stories. Um, so now, uh, while I met him in 99. Now, while I'm doing my state bid in 2000, like 2000, 2001 somewhere, his lawyer sent a private investigator, the lawyer, well, I don't know if it's the lawyer, there's two people, white, a young white female and a young white male come see me. They say, the people want to give him the death penalty. They want to call you as a witness for the state because they, your phone was tapped. He said that Sterling was a bully, Sterling did this and this. Okay, I had a known stepper on the street that wanted him out and was waiting on him. They wanted to try to bone him out and everything. They was trying to get to him that bad, right? So it's like, okay, yeah, he gonna, he'll be home, just be cool. So she was like, well, when you sign this paper saying he shouldn't get the death penalty, that he should get at least five years or something? I was like, of course. All right, I'll go back to court. Now, he told a story about SID, right? But then he tell you in the SOD, whatever. These some big guys, like about six, four, six. Yeah, he said that you was that they was like you was four or five deep right. SOD, but then he he was talking about a scenario in which he claims that 
you walked in court with them. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so now, here's the problem with that uh, situation. When you go into court, we have four holding tanks in the front and we have two in the back, where the women be at and then where the homosexuals be at. Now, when these guys are talking about that allegedly escorted me to the court, these are the guys, like when we cut up on the tier, anybody who's been to OPP, been out of jail, they know when these guys come, they like to, with these turtle suits, they come and they beating, they beating the brakes off. Right. Because they're the big, they real big, they come and they breaking you up. So now, if I'm on the docks being escorted by these people, and he said he was throwing stuff at me, right? So yeah. I'm like, but this, this got to be a movie, bro. So as I'm walking. He said, let me remember reset for those who don't know, know what that was going on. Ripper claims, makes a claims. He pulls up paperwork saying that Terrence Gangster Williams basically was a witness in his, in his defense. And you came to you came to the courthouse with four SOD security guards or he whatever. They, one agent, I think. He yeah, four, yeah. I had five all together, so I'm like, boy, they asked right. I'm stepping right. right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, did he say the other step was inmates start throwing stuff at me? Right. Right. First of all, he said they was like like they was like. He said he, he, he called the hood because he said in his case, there was a special witness and you were the witness, but nobody knew who it was. And when you walked in, niggas was like, wow, like not him type shit. Let me tell you this, bro. And I want people to research this stuff. In New Orleans, if you catch a murder case, within that week, you can go to the police department and get a police report. And it's going to tell you who your witness is. That's why a lot of murders get beat. Because it's going to tell you who your witness is. It's going to tell you oh. their address, their phone number, where they work at, their oh. social security number, their date of birth. It's going to give you all that. That's cap. Anyway, so let me play this movie out for y'all now. So as I'm walking, they throwing stuff at me, right? Here's one problem with that. People who've been incarcerated know that we don't have nothing on the dock. We have what we call the dock on the tier and the holding tanks. We're waiting to go to court, right? We don't have, as long as they got a toilet paper roll, so unless a lot of people took a lot of toilet paper, and he wetted, I guess, to make it a little harder to throw that, right? Whatever the case may be. Now, this is the problem with that. You got these SODs he's talking about that's escorting me. They known to break people up, beat the brace off people. So if they throwing stuff at me, that means I'm in the middle. Y'all hitting them. So now what they going to do? Stop, go pop that set of going there and beat the people. But anyway, people don't know this, right? It's a guy named Jelly Bean from the Calio. No one step. I wish someone would interview him. Um, another one, I had him on my channel, but he got off because he's a known stepper from a night one named Tremel. Light skinned, everybody know him. He, been, he did nine years in the Paris fighting or uh, uh, kidnapping, and me and Blabber helped him get out. Um, they were on the docks with me. We were actually in the, I was actually in the holding cell with these steppers, right? I go out to the court. You know him? Yeah. Did you see him shoot Sterling? No. Was he the one who killed Sterling? No. Was Sterling known to carry guns? Was he a violent person? Yes. Now, here's the thing. He's going to show you a paperwork. See Terrence with your name? You see he kind of, but why he ain't show you, yeah, gangster say, I did this, yeah. So if I'm a star witness, if I'm a key witness for the state, how you get five years? I'm here to tell on you. I'm here to hurt you. They already want to get you deputy. They got you on the phone. They got you admitting to killing him. But your defense is, you tell your lawyer, man, he was a bully, he used to bully me. Stutter is a known killer. Stutter got a arrest record for violence. So now, when his lawyer comes to me, he's like, yeah, I agree with that. I help him. But for the internet, thanks to toll on me. So if you notice this, anybody who read paperwork gonna show the, 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 the meat of it. Yeah, he said I killed him. Yeah, he the one killed. He don't do that. Oh, he just showed my name and said this. Bam, now y'all see, he a snitch. All right, I'll take the red jacket. Give me two X. No, I wear three X because I don't like the tight stuff. But um, if someone, like, I was going to get it, right, and get the affidavit, the paperwork showing where I signed the paper saying, yes, uh, Sterling was violent. Uh, yes, Sterling used to pick on these guys and do all this. Sterling's mother's mad with me about that. She said that I freed the guy who killed her son. Moms don't understand the street life like we wanted him out because Someone that was home that was known stepper was waiting on him, but he was killed before he could make it out. But like I say, uh, no one questioned on the internet what certain people did. Why you didn't show us everything? You just showing them little, you know what I'm saying? Get your whole file. Show them where I wrote the paper saying, yeah, Sterling was violent, Sterling was picking on you. They don't show that. 
You just want to show this for the internet and keep it going. But my main thing, if you saying you got a star witness against you, how you get five years? Any star witness going to go against somebody, you're going to get at least a life sentence. Got five years. Now, do you think, um, I think Charleston White was one of the people that said that um, the black blogs are making it worse as far as like us getting these stories, you know, like these real gangster stories, niggas is really telling what's going on and then something's coming behind it. You've seen the BTB Savage, you've seen, you know, you just see it play out. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like um, people reporting, getting these stories are making it worse or do you think it just is what it is? That's both. That's like a, um, because here's the thing. On one hand, yes, it make it worse because they're spreading the gospel. Without them, the news wouldn't get out. Facts. But on the other hand, I'm speaking from my experience. I re benefit from that. So I don't have a problem with that, you know, because I get paid to entertain I get paid to put out content now. So on one hand, you know, we like, man, you can't do this. You shouldn't be doing it. But on the other hand, we still entertain it. We still doing this. Yeah, I think uh, people love those uh, mafia stories and, uh, you know, before social media stories, because this was going down. And mind you, Texas or Dallas wasn't connected with New Orleans like that or Memphis and Miami. These spots weren't really connected like that. But so to hear these stories and then drive through the through the Magnolia and things like that, it, it, it does makes it does make it more interesting. Now, I got to ask, uh, you know, the world has been qu going crazy. You know, Boosie reposted, uh, you know, uh, about the paperwork in uh, 40 cases, 40. 40. That's a lot of cases. They say, man, you did more than just, uh, you know, telling some dead people. Uh, your your partners, I'm sorry. Uh, you did more than tell on your partners, and you actually were active in cases. And now again, they show paperwork where they just showing 40 cases, and they're like, "See, see, a, a snitch, a snitch, a rat is a rat." You know, he's doing a lot of talking. But tell us, you know, you just said the meat of paperwork and things like that. You just mentioned how paperwork works and going through the. No one really wants to go through all it. No one wants to see a box of paperwork on their desk and say, "Let's go through it all." But they do want the cliff notes sometimes. So, but they could, you know, take that and kind of run with a narrative. Right. The narrative that they're running with right now that you, you, you have close 40 cases, uh, act, you know, those who were living to, uh, some cases, you know, where people were still in jail, moving around and, you know, you, 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 you was, you was the, the assistant to get all those shut down. What do you say to that? Boosie Cappen. This is what Boosie did. And this with a lot of his fan base and a lot of people who didn't look at the paperwork, took it and ran with it, right? <laughs> Who's to say, he told on 40 people. No, doing the stunning mosquito are deceased and myself. Look at the paperwork, you're gonna see that I closed 40 homicides dealing with the three hot boys that are deceased and myself. I even implicated myself in a lot of those murders yeah. because I was there. But to the world, when Boosie said, see he told on 40 people and he put the paperwork up, nobody's not gonna read. If you're going to read the fine print, you're going to see they're going to say he, Terrence William admitted that he killed such and such. Terrence William admitted him and John Brown. Those are the hot boys. They all are deceased. Every last one of those murders, those 40, the people are dead. But they didn't read. They just took him with boots because he's a celebrity. I appreciate it because guess what? I mean, yeah, he, he, he got me right here. He shot him yet again. He shot him yet again. He keep helping me. But did you whack more people than Jeffrey Dahmer? I don't know, but I would say this. <laughs> Because I don't know who, who I heard of this Jeffrey Dahmer Ted, Dimer Ted guy. Bundy You know what I'm saying I heard of these people right um, We were just Out there young Wild and busting our gun But um, That That's people a lot, yeah, 40 niggas yeah, a lot. When, when you ever go back And look at it Like you know Yeah now that you found religion Do you ever You ever go back and say 40, 40. cases And mind you These are just cases that yeah, That, that, that yeah. they saying you yeah. mean, God there might be more out there and, yeah. Do you ever just sit back And look <laughs> Yeah, you ever just sit back and be like, that's a lot, that's a lot. No, because um, I always tell people this, like, I remember the prosecutor asking me uh, in the room, do you regret? I was like, no. She said, see, that's why I won't let him out. He went, I was like, well, first of all, I don't regret nothing I've done. You know, because everybody that was killed was in the streets. Did yeah, yeah, something yeah, dirt, yeah. did something wrong. I got you. Now, you don't justify that true, but they were living the street life, I was living the street yeah, life. Right, 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 just, right. I just came out on top on a lot of those situations. Right. Majority of them. Um, there are stuff 
that the feds really wanted, wanted me to talk about, that I was like, no, I ain't doing that. You know, um, dealing with cash money. They got me and Birdman on the phone talking a lot, you know, so. But certain things you just can't do. Certain things I would not do. And that's like now, like I be telling people what, I'm got, what I have going on with my documentary, because it's like I have paperwork that people testify to saying I was a hitman for cash money. Mm. Um, the feds got all this information. You got people talking about certain so the feds wanted me to admit that I invested in cash money. And if you put my paperwork, you'll see it's in my at factual basis. Factual basis or with, your, with all you admit that would happen in your case. So um, I was like, no, I don't want to admit to this. I want to waive this. So they waived it. They didn't, they didn't throw the statement out. They waived it because it was like, later on, if you want to come and tell us this cash money story, we're going to be able to book them, right? Yeah. So um, that's why they waived the statement. So um, there are a lot of stuff that they wanted to know, they wanted to talk that I, wasn't, I just wasn't going to talk with. Um, certain stuff that how they say you're going to go to your grave with, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I don't like now that they want to hold my documentary back because they, they think that I'm going to expose a lot of stuff with cash money. And like I always say, if I protect the cash money for 20 something years, almost 30 years, we'll make you, and I'm free now, we'll make you think I'm going to just release stuff now. I'm free. You know what I'm saying? Go, and, and then the thing about it, I am happy and content with the little I have. I don't ask nobody for nothing. I don't want for nothing. You know, I'm able to do what I want. You know? So, um, but let's get back to the top of your hand. Cause y'all, you know I'm old. I get sidetracked. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah uh, the paperwork with Boosie post on Twitter was out way before Boosie. If you go back and do your research, I did a video on it three days before Boosie posted, put it out. Right? Um, some YouTube channel called In the Mix put it out first. Then uh, my Muslim brother, I hit him up. Man, you see this? this he put it out and said, well, man, you might well make you some money now. So a lot of little channels that I knew, I was hitting them up. Man, y'all might well make y'all a story, get y'all some money. So now when people, you know, like a lot of people who don't like Boosie, they send me stuff. People who don't like me send Boosie stuff. So Boosie thought he had something, right? So he posted. But he don't know I wanted him to do that because I knew him doing it, say cheese, everybody going to get it, and it's going to go viral. Right. And what I did was I said, you know what? If you notice this, I'm the only one that can rough uh, Boosie feathers. Think about this, Charles White is the king of trolling, and Boosie don't entertain him a lot. But the minute I say something, Boosie gonna respond. <clears throat> Think about it now, because I got, the, I got the ears of the streets, I got the step of ears, and Boosie portraying the image that he's really not. So when I call him on it, he gotta, he gotta answer back. He had to answer back, right? So now when I, 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 uh, I go through my, you I go, I check all my Instagram, I go through my Instagram, someone sent me a clip with Boosie on Vlad, when he, when he mentioned that, Vlad said, yeah, you was on that road. He was like, yeah, I was on that road. And um, when I beat my uh, murder, I had a chance, to, I had a choice to either stay on, stay in PC, or go to population for my last two years. And I did two years in, my, in population. So I post that little clip. See, Boosie, you was in PC. He went off on me. You, he told on for he told on everybody, right? So I, I wanted that, right? Because he helped me, right? So, uh, but I'd be like, Boosie, I hit you with facts. You hit me with a bunch of bull. But I appreciate it because now, you got people, you got millions of followers. You got people who don't know me. Now they want to know who is this guy. So they come into my page. They, they, they support me. They, they view, you know, it's, it's working for me, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not, here's the thing. I don't call um, Birdman, even Slim, uh, ask them for money. I don't beg nobody for nothing, you know. Uh, God put me in a position where I'm making my own money. I'm good. And um, I got my own uh, film production company now, my own LLC. So now I'm just writing all my own movies. So now, because everybody, man, you need to get that 50, you need to be a movie. You need to, no, they're going to come to me. Okay. Or I'm going on, I'm about to pay to have my own, my own pilot shot. You know what I'm saying? So I got money now where I can do what I need to do. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So um, when people, like I tell people, when people say stuff about me, I don't run from it, I run to it because this is going to get me the views. This is what it is. I'm not a, I denounce the streets. When I was in the streets, they couldn't handle me. They was, they, you know, they, now I would say this, you had other steppers that was at me. So, you know, we was doing our thing. But when I was in the streets, they didn't, they didn't want that. So now that I'm on the internet, let me stay there. You know, y'all could dish me all y'all want on the internet. If I see y'all got views, if I see where I can benefit from it, then I'll, we'll entertain it. If not, I want it, because there's a lot of small channels be shooting there, be putting stuff, you ain't nothing, get out the way. You know what I'm saying? So, but the big boys, the big channel, I, I, I'm there. Mr. Answer right back. 
You said that you uh, made the rules and you broke them, right? Yes, sir. Can you list any of those rules that, that y'all had? The main one was never talk to law enforcement agency no matter what. Mm. Um, because, you know, the police used to do this kind of <laughs> slick stuff. Like, we might be at a red light or we might be at the uh, gas station, so they might pull up. And what's up, man? And like kind of talk like this whole regular conversation. So to the people that's riding by the first day, they think, oh, he worked with the police. What are you doing talking to the police at the gas station? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? So don't never stand up to talk to the police. Mm -hmm. uh, never kill uh, children. Mm -hmm. We never took it. Don't never take your beef out on family members. Mm -hmm. You know, we had these rules. You were damn near a child yourself, though. Right. Hold on, so like, shoot, like, like how they shooting up houses that was out the... Yeah, man, I ain't never... Bro, let me explain something to you. This me. I've never... Fourth of July or uh, New Year's, I've never shot a gun in the air. I never believed in wasting bullets. Mm -hmm. it, was only, it was only one guy that I shot around a club that lived, and after that I played these to my gun, I said, every time I pull it, they're going to die. So that, was, that just was the rules. And honestly, let me tell y'all this, and I laugh about it now, right? Um... You know, Birdman, Birdman is very vocal, right? So at the time we had this round table, some of the rules I was coming up with, I was shooting at him because I was like, he might be the weak link out of this group down the line. I'm thinking this, right? And all the while, I wound up coming forward breaking the rules. So I was making these rules for him. Mm. And all the while, I violated the rules. So, um, yeah. But, uh, so, do <laughs> so do you have mercy on anybody that breaks the rules? Like, like a 6'9 who just got beat up? Does he get a, a pass for breaking rules or no? What? I'm talking about now? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm, saying, I'm, I'm saying now that you kind of, you know. Yeah, he, Paul, he with my group. That's my homie. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with him. I'm on his side. Wait. I, I explained when I did my video. I did a video on that. Yeah, I saw See, that. See, I'm a little channel. Y'all don't pay attention to me. No, nah, I saw that. We saw that. We saw um, that. I explained to the world that we took a good loss. And what I meant by that is we took a loss. He got beat up. But it was a good loss because he didn't run. Mm. You know, some people try to take out. So he stood there, took his beat, and then he must have stood there, he got beat, said, y'all had to jump. I'm like, man, something ain't right with this. Did he stage this? Did he pay? But I'm like, I'm, I look good for my age, so I'm not going to pay somebody to beat me up. I so, can't take no, 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 I can't take no bruises. So as you see, as you're watching it, you know, I'm sure, like, you know, you got, once you see the video, Takashi on the ground, legs kicking, and, like, what's going on through your head? Like, are you and like... I wonder what he's doing with them little short songs for number one. <laughs> he's too comfortable with them little bitty days to do song. I'm like, and then the thing was this, though, honestly, I was like, Bro, you just was on a jet with millions of dollars. Where's your security? Like, don't get too comfortable. Because this is the thing. This is the, this is the difference between him and I. I don't get on social media and just cuss out any and everybody. This man be saying some stuff. I be like, whoa. He violated King Vaughn. He did a lot of stuff where people trying to see you when they see you. You know? So how you a guy that got millions of dollars... Get that comfortable where you don't bring your, your protection with you when you go and work out wherever you at. Now, now, but it was if you had, if anybody noticed, and uh, Charleston White also brought this up, the dudes who jumped him were Hispanic. They weren't even black, but you got about a black people celebrating it like um, it's a win. It's a win for the. Black. It's a win for the real for the steppers. But they, he Charleston White said they were beating him up because he had recently dissed um, Puerto Ricans. He said uh, Mexicans are better than our Mexicans are just Puerto Rican. Puerto Ricans are just Mexicans. They're just whatever. And basically, the the Puerto Rican uh, nationalities felt disrespected behind it. And it wasn't even behind him being no snitch or had nothing to do with that. Okay. Well, let me let me correct it because they'll get on us about this. Puerto Ricans are Puerto Ricans now. Yeah. The Mexicans are Mexicans. They'll because I had yeah. I been, they'll go. <laughs> they'll well, go we ain't them because you know they be beefy too. They got different dialect. Right. Dominicans, all of them. Right. Um, well, see, here's the thing. I like it. A lot of the blacks these days, a lot of them like to shoot. A lot of them not going to really fight, right? right? You have some will, but a lot of them, 6 uh, 9 from what I would like to see, he have a lot of hood dudes surrounding him when he go do these interviews. So a lot of blacks feel like he's going to have fighters, shooters with him. I ain't going to mess with that. Whereas the Latinos don't care. And another thing, the Latinos run off game, off politics. If you got to go, you got to go. If you don't, you're going to be the one we're going to get next. So... They care. They not. They not going for the disrespect. You disrespect mm -hmm. us when we see. We gonna touch you, and that's what they did. Yeah. So now you got a lot of blacks that celebrating it because a lot of them don't like snitching. So a lot of them was like, yeah, they got on your butt, but a lot of them ain't gonna do it. So it's like some fake yeah. celebrating. Yeah, yeah. does it? Cause, at, at, cause at the one at a point it's like, y'all hate snitches so much, but we don't see none of y'all getting active. I guess cause y'all got too much money or whatever. Yeah. But y'all ain't really handling no business. What's the point? They um, sideline chili, you know. 
they going to, yeah, get him, get him. Yeah, I don't like him. Or they're going to post stuff like Boosie do. You know, they're going to post it all day, but they're not going to really get them up. And rightfully so, because you got to keep my life, do get money. You know what I'm saying? Um, but this is the thing that get me, now that I'm on this side. Mm -hmm. How a lot of people, the steppers, I'm talking to you steppers now, how they get up. Um, man, y'all ratting, y'all not keeping it real, y'all taking people, giving these people these life sentences, taking them from their children. Their children... Um, not being neglected of a father because you want a rag, you couldn't handle it, da, 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 right? So now, who's speaking for the deceased? Because you got a lot of people, you got guys that are going to your neighborhood. Because he's from a different neighborhood, you kill him. Or because he got some fresh tennis shoes on, kicks on, you like, you rob him, you kill him. Or because he got on some, some jewelry, and sometimes the jewelry be fake, you kill him. Right. Or you just rob him because he, he get money or he got a drug house or, or, or shop or, or whatever. You ride, run down, you rob him, you kill him. What about his children? Right. Who speak up for his children? Because now this man is dead. His children can't talk to him, can't go see him no more. But the ones who in jail, their children can still hear their fault. They get, get a uh, response back. Mm -hmm. But the ones in the grave can't. You know what I'm saying? So a right. lot of dudes, they say stuff, they hear other steppers say stuff, mm -hmm. and it sounds good. Right. But you don't ever take the time to analyze that. Like, okay, this dude did their... His partner got weak and told, right? Now you put this man away, now you took it from his children. But what about the one that was killed that was taken from his children? You know what I'm saying? So we never think about that. We just get up there, we like the, like the pot of one to crack it. We, we just repeat what we hear that sound cool, you know? And like I say, I was part of that, you know? So now I'm over here. So I got a different look on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm now, biased. Now we know our fair, everything is fair in war, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I was reading a book recently about L.A. Gangster, and they said one tactic to get a nigga off the streets was if he was just doing too much, was just to tell the law, he, or he over here at this spot, he either hustle right here or he going to be over here, he going to have a gun, and the police would go grab him and th because he, they already knew he was going to be certain place at a certain time, and then maybe they didn't have enough, uh, they were either wasn't prepared to go get him or didn't have what they need, the equipment they need to go get him. So they just tell the police where he's going to be and they go pick him up and he'd be off the street for a couple of months, give him time to get their shit together. Yeah. Do you think that's a tactic? What, did you ever see that tactic get used on nigga? Or? Is that snitching? I just saw that in book. I just seen that in Godfather Home. Yeah. They did the same shit. Oh, yeah, you know, Joe Colombo got the bricks. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Bro. That is stitches at its highest form. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> let, let me so ask you think about this, bro. That's a good tactic. Like for me, that's yeah. a good tactic. Yeah. How you call the police and say, hey, he's gonna be over here to regroup, right? Now when you go put put the police on this man, he got guns, drugs, have a murder weapon, anything on him. So now you just sit this man away for the rest of his life. You snitching. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even must now if I'm active. My old way, I'm not going to tell nobody my tactic. If I did that, I'm going to keep that on the wraps. Right. Now, I can talk, I can say, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like <laughs> it now, yeah. Yeah. But Good move. On the step aside, now that ain't cool. Right. But it's not, is that, is that not considered playing chess? No, that's considered you snitching. Because, <laughs> listen, because listen, first of all, now my question is this. You're using your phone, you know when you call it the, the dispatcher, they got your number, you call them. They got your voice on there. So now my thing is, are you using a fake phone? You're disguising your voice? What, it's a lot of stuff you got to do. What if you send, like, your granny to, to, to call me? I go do that, but you still read it because now here's the thing. Because if I want to go deep into it, when I get my police report, it's going to tell me granny told. Yeah. Ooh, hey, yo, you know old lady on, on Montgomery Street on Martin Luther King? Yeah, she, oh, yeah, that's gangster grandma. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, gangster Rad. Oh, man. I'm going to get the charge regardless. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, but a lot of people don't think that far. But okay, so I gotta ask you then, because like like I said, I'm watching the old gangster movies. You got mm -hmm. Godfather Harlem. All the Italians use that tactic. <laughs> Bro, all the Italians snitched. Every one of them, damn near, it seems exactly. like. Exactly. That's why I be telling people this, <clears throat> and that's the problem with us as blacks. And I was one of them, right? We had got so caught up into the Italians or way of life till we start putting that in our way of life, right? And. The problem with that was a lot of these guys had flaws. When we was glorifying, like a lot of us are named ourselves after these guys, Scarface, or, or, or Frank Nitti, or, or, or Don Carleon. We learned all these people, right? So I was infatuated with the mob when I was incarcerated. I used to read a lot of mob books. 
So when I got the Mod Encyclopedia, when I started reading how Frank Nitty, they wanted him to, the Mod wanted him to take a, uh, it was a little petty, uh, Mr. Meaning fraud charge, what kind of charge, tax evasion charge they wanted him to take to go do like a year or two. And he was scared to go to jail, so he committed suicide, shot himself in the head. They found him on side the railroad tracks. You know, so as I'm reading a lot of this stuff about these mob guys, the, the stuff, uh, uh, what is it, the Bonnie and Clyde, the, the, uh, the one when he was raped in jail. Um, um, or, or, or my favorite one of all, Lucky Luciano. He my favorite mob star of all of them. Uh, he was the first one to start the control by, gave up the coke, you know, snitched. You know what I'm saying? But um, then I read this book with a mob where they say when they killed someone, they would pluck the eyes out because it was like when they did an autopsy, they thought that the people did the autopsy, that was the last thing that the body seen, so they thought they was going to be able to know that this is the one who killed them. I was like, wow, that was some of the dumbest stuff they did to think, right? So we took that in our culture and we ran with that, right? For real. So I'm like, yo, this stuff is just overrated. So me, you know, I used to always, like, we be in jail, say to be like, this is a gangster, man, you always overthinking stuff. I said, that's what's wrong with y'all. Y'all don't like to overthink. That's why people think we country and slow now down south. That's y'all problem right there. And every time I come, they be like, man, you always overthink, so you always doing stuff. Like, all right, cool. So that's what I just denounced that mob stuff. I just got away from it, you know. But um, they always did snitch and rat, you know, they all that, uh, uh, what that word they use, the, old, the I can't pronounce it now, but don't tell, be silent, but yet they always told. So it's like you make the rules and you break the rules, yeah. you know? So, but, so I uh, watch a lot of documentaries and they say that when you kill somebody, it could be better than sex. What would you say to that? Ain't nothing better than sex. I'm gonna put that on record. Um, <laughs> we'll take the record. Right, now I would say this, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, and now you got me thinking about that now. It's a good uh, chill that runs through my body. When I get one of my victims, I get them, I'm like, yeah, I got you. Because see, I always tell people this, I've always been scared to die first. I don't want to die first, I'm scared to die first. Because I always tell people, nobody's going to retaliate like I'm going to retaliate. My friends might take their time, drag their leg, I might let it go. Family member might cry, put my face on the t-shirt, had a second line of DJ for me, and then the killer get away. Me, I know what I'm, I know what I'm gonna do. So I always be scared to die first, but it's a good feeling when you get your victim, very good feeling, but it ain't better than sex. None of that is better than sex. I don't know who came up with that one. <laughs> okay. He down bad. And then, on this side, just looking, you've been through all this shit. When is it okay to step? When I was stepping or now? Just, just looking at it, like, when is it okay to step? Just in all the life you've been through, when do you feel like it's okay to step? Because some people just have it in them. It's just, it's just what they gonna do. See, back then, um, we did a lot of stepping in broad daylight. Damn. You know, because it was like, yeah, because that's the time, you gotta keep in mind is this. A lot of people got in their head Oh, I'm going to do a drive-by at night or at nighttime when nobody don't see me. We're going to go get our man, right? Where in the daytime, everybody is out because everybody thinking that police out or too many witnesses out. So he ain't going to do it. Well, that's the best time. And when you got a click and when you got money, I dare you come to court. I dare you play with me. Mm. So in this mentality, what was your feeling? Were you more anxious? Were you more nervous? Like when you gotta go out there and get to it, like and you you on the hunt, like what, what's going, like what feeling are you feeling? Cause you make it seem like it's like because it's a retaliation, like your adrenaline's already pumping. But what are you feeling like? Are you nervous? Are you like, ooh, I'm anxious. I can't wait to get this off. I'm never nervous because when I was young, when um this big celebrity first uh brought me to do my first hit. Ever since then, it's been like natural for me, right? So I'm never nervous. It's always like, I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, I got you now, I'm gonna get you. Cause you ain't, you slipping right now, you don't think I'm coming, you know? Um, the only time I didn't like when I was in the game was when it rained. Because you know, when it rains like a rainy day, everybody inside. Uh -huh. But when it's up and when it's sunny up and about, you will get phone call, beat your people going off. Oh, oh, boy, them in a red Monte Carlo. Oh, they in the photo Grand Prix. They came back photo D. They got AK. They were looking for you. So I know what car you in. I know what y'all doing. Mm. On it's raining, everybody inside. So I don't, I don't have no intel. I don't know what's going on. 
How, how down bad did you ever catch somebody like where they was in like a porta potty or something coming out or leaving out a, <laughs> leaving out a female house just bust, just bust a good one or something? We caught we caught a person in the car slipping, um, female in the car with him. Get out, she leave. Talking about pants down. Oh damn. Um, oh. Yeah, see, we had the thing back then like a lot of females played. Man, it's, it's some gangster females I know. Ah, yeah. I can't mention them. I wouldn't dare. Um, <laughs> but there's some gangster females out there. <laughs> um, that, man. You ever use a setup chick? Like, was that like a thing that you like, hey, we're going to, this badass female from the mouth. Uh, shit, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we know they're going to be on her. Yes. yes. <laughs> Damn. Yes. Um, one of my, two of my co-defendants, my phone was tapped. Um, I get a call out of nowhere one day. And uh, she was in college, man. She said, you busy? I was like, nah, what's up? Hold on. She put this girl on the phone. Yo, I want you to come down here to Tennessee and rob these old PANs. First thing in my mind, Master P trying to set me up. Because <laughs> so I'm like, this female want me to come to Tennessee and rob these dope dealers, right? Um, so I'm like, I'm listening. To, I'm hearing her out because I'm like, it's a, it's a slight chance that she's for real. So I'm, I'm not going to miss this lick. It's a female involved. These dudes are weak for females, right? Yeah. So I'm listening to her. She giving me the spiel how she want to do it. I'm like, all right, put. So I said, on the phone. She put her on the phone. I said, hey, what's up? She for real? She said, yeah, she did it before. She set her, uh, one of her boyfriends up. They got two kilos of deals. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh, okay. So she for real. All right. Look, y'all come down here and get the gun because we 3D. We never have to ride on the highway with no guns. The phone, the Fed got my phone tapping this time too. They listening oh. to this, right? The girls come down. When she saw we were serious, so she's like, hold on, hold on, let me put, because she, she, she wanted us, after the club, he'd come to her house, she wanted us to follow him and then get him. I was like, for what? Leave the back door open, we're going to come in the house, handcuff him, put him in the trunk, and then we're going to get the dope and get the money and we're going to let him go, but we wasn't. That's what I told her. The fan was into my car, right? I'm so happy that she got scared when she seen me and the other two guys with me, and we got the guns, like, y'all, take this. She was like, well, hold up. So she back up out of it, right? <laughs> so the girl leave, when she's on her way back to Tennessee, um, all this in document, all this in court document. Yeah. I can show y'all the case to go pull it because in her trial, my name all through her trial. Damn. I just posted paperwork where they were saying I was a hitman for kids. The FBI got on the stand all because the FBI was the one that was, uh, re you know, recording me. Yeah. So, um, see, uh, they, they, they went to this mall before they got ready to go on the highway. They got the Reeboks in here. They got them on Saturday. I said, look, bring me this color, this color, bring them. So she had to turn around and come back. So on her way on the highway, the police pulled her over. The state troopers pulled her over. Because the feds had Already, told them to pull yeah. her over. They got guns in that car. So now they're making the case stronger, right? Damn. They didn't have guns in the car. So now the girl got so mad, she got her lawyer, got her people involved saying she was being harassed. All the while, they charged her with uh, conspiracy to commit robbery and all this stuff. So she goes to trial. Her other friend testified against her. And she, her friend got two years, six months. She wound up getting five years for it. But when she appealed it, my name all through her appeal. You think it was my trial. God damn. All through her stuff. Damn. How? Um, how long was the feds listening in on your on Let your me tell you what's crazy, bro. The feds started following me in 97 or October, November, somewhere. But I would know they would follow me, right? So what I would do when I'm going by a female house, I would pick up speed. It was back off. But if I'm going to the mall, I let them follow me because it's like, okay, y'all come on. So if anybody try to get at me, y'all going to know who did it or y'all going to step in or whatever. Um, they couldn't never, like in my case, they, in my, in my federal document, they say we couldn't, we were unable to take pictures and, and, and have his hair on shop under surveillance due to his lookouts. Because like we might walk out, my mother's courtyard was in the back. Like we would walk out the courtyard to the street and look down and we'd see the fed over there. We'd, like, look, we'd point at the car. Like look at him. With but, a little undercover, a little, like a little black with something. With tin and windows on and all. You're right. Oh, yeah. We're all pointing, look at him and they'll pack and leave. They was never able to get, you know how they take pictures of people? Yeah. Through my case, you would never see that in my case. They admit we couldn't because they knew we, I would change cars every day. Damn. Every day I would switch cars because I really, I didn't do it for the feds. I was doing it for my enemies. But yeah. all the while the feds was owning me, right? So, um, you know, the feds, they were, they were traveling, they were following me. But the feds finally got my phone tapped February of 98. I go to jail in March because I was talking about killing my connect. Ah. But had they tapped my phone in November, December when me and Killer Stone's on there talking about hits and murdering this and this, man, we'd be under the jail. 
Damn. Where where was uh the police most active? Was it the the Mephlamine? Was it in the Magnolia? Like where were they? Like where you just like man, it's just hot. Everywhere. Over, everywhere. The, all of New Orleans. Every project. Well, I take that back. I know for a fact the Magnolia. I know the Calio. I don't know about the Mel. I know we had. The police had houses back there. They wound up getting subs. Oh, damn. They living there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's how it goes. They, they moved in our project, posted up back there. So it was always, uh, it was always, uh, uh, <laughs> the police always around, especially on Tuesday and Thursday, task force day. So they around. They lurking. But we didn't care. What, yeah, what it? Because I always hear Tuesdays and Thursdays. What, is, what does that even mean? That's when the police, undercover calls, about four deep. Pulling up, jumping out, come here, running after you, grabbing you up. You know, that's Tuesday. That's, that's the workout day. That's the, that's why, why do you think it was Tuesday? I mean, because it had to be so synchronized for y'all to, in songs, they'd be like, oh, Tuesday, Thursday, like, better, why for the sweet? streets. Right. <laughs> but I never tell you it's crazy. They knew we knew. We knew about it, but we still sold drugs, still committed crime. But we just were, well, we were just young, wild, ignorant soldiers out there, didn't care. Damn. It was like this here. We had the same in our city. You gotta pop me to stop. Mm. So it was just like I say, we was just gone. In it to win it. We had all kind of little things we to say because I was just we just didn't respect the law. But Damn. when it come, we were run. But <laughs> good workout. <laughs> yeah, we know the police was coming Tuesday and Thursday, but you gotta keep in mind, you still got fiends, they still wanna get high. So we got to hustle. Yeah. So we, in our mind, they're going to come around this town. We're going to get a few dollars. Then we're going to close shop. Was you, was you the fastest out of Hot Boys? That's a good question. <laughs> I had to be faster than Dooney because Dooney was a little, <laughs> a little chubby. Now, Sterling was fast. Uh, I want to say Mosquito because he was quick on it. Mosquito was the fast out of all of us. Oh, you go. Um, I, I, I want to say I was faster than Dooney. But I don't know we never raced, but I, I, I'm just going to take that. <laughs> okay, take okay. That. I'll okay. take that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, hey, I, I got to ask you, what advice would you give, uh, you know, Donald Trump just got indicted. If he was to actually step foot in jail and said, I want to go to Jim Pop, what advice would you give Sir Donald Trump on his uh, first day in? Well, first of all, they have made it um, better living conditions for people like Donald Trump now. Um, he have a petty misdemeanor charge. Yeah. So he's going to a camp. A camp might have sometimes 100, sometimes two, 300 inmates, but it's only like maybe one CO, two CO. So they up all night, moving around. They free. It's a camp. No violence going on. Um, so he's going to be fine. Worst case scenario, if they put him in Butner, which is a low custody, they got mediums too, right? The feds now have made jails where it's called dropout jails, where if you was an ex-gang member, if you're a sex offender where you rape young girls or whatever, sex offenders or, or um, ex-gang members, guys who cooperate with the government, they're housing them there now. So if you active, you a real stepper, you can't come on this compound. And if you active and you a real stepper and you sign that waiver to go on that compound, if you want to jump on somebody, beat somebody up, stab somebody, your gang is going to jump on you. So uh, he's going to be fine. He, he's going to be all right. The Fed's not like it was back in the day. Now, when you look on Instagram, man, and you see three, four goons, right, talking about we snatched Ice Spice Chain, a female artist. What, what comes to your mind? Do you be like, man, these street niggas are just gone way too far with this shit? Like they on there bragging, yeah, we got your chain out. I'm like, God damn. Okay, now here's the thing. I got two answers. I got the stepper answer. That's what we're gonna start. I'm gonna do the stepper answer. I'm gonna do the good boy Terrence. All right. <laughs> uh, as far as the stepper answer, Terrence, it's all fair game because whoever she is, she's putting herself out to the public. Like, hey, I'm a rapper, or hey, I'm such and such. I'm rocking this. So I don't know if she went back and forth with the social media beef with these guys. I don't know the whole situation with that. But speaking from a stepper point of view, it's all fair game. Mm. Um, so, you know, social media has made a way where they could degrade people now. You know, matter of fact, I was just about to do a, a piece on how Mano uh, exposed uh, Troy Ave fake change. Yeah, we saw you that. Know? Um, Mano. Yeah, so I was gonna do a, a little video on that, speaking about that. Um, kind of a little bit 
on Troy Ave's defense. But um, it's fair game because a lot yeah. of people putting this stuff out there. Damn. Now, so, hold up. Yeah, the, well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, we got to go to the other side. It's not cool because you take it from a female. Go, it's a bunch of males that's uh, tough like you tough. If you want to go on a social media and post it, take something from somebody you know going to get back at you right away. Mm. So that let me know right now your, 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 uh, your gangster is in question, your stepping ability is in question now because you're going to post a female chain. But go, it's a plenty of dudes that be rocking jewelry. Go take theirs. Was that a thing back in your day as far as for you, like robbery? Like, I'm going to take somebody chain or something, or I'm going to take somebody, you know, somebody flashing money. I'm a... I wasn't big on jewelry, but I had jewelry. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of fake jewelry. Um, that's why I want to do that piece with Manuel did. <laughs> um, because a lot of people, you have to fake it till you make it. Yeah. I was able to uh, hit a lick. I used to go to college, right? And uh, I had my cash money piece. One of my co defendants put me onto this man that had a bunch of fake Rolex watches. You couldn't tell it was fake, right? So I got the rolly, got the, got the hot pepper earrings. So I'm coming to this call out, minding my business. The man spot me. He tell a female I know at the call out, hey, tell him my people need to holler at him. I'm like, what's up? Oh, they want to score something, but we can't talk over the phone. I said, what they want? How much they have? 19.5. I said, 19.5? 19 big ones? Yeah. So you mean tell me they got like, they're supposed to have 39,000 now, they want to buy two kilos, right? So this man already stereotyped me because he see me come and fly. I got my fake jewelry on, so he thinking I'm a big drug dealer. All the while I jack, I rob people. He walking right into my hands. And but they was short a thousand dollars. They beat me out a thousand dollars. They shot my truck up though. They got, they got my truck down the line. I forgot to tell my co defendant that, that I had jacked these guys across the river Damn. in my truck, and uh, they hit it up. So. Uh, yeah, I wasn't no big jury man, but when I go out of town or certain areas, I'm a wedding jury because I want to draw the drug dealers in. I want to draw oh, them in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. What, would, what did you spend your money on there? Because, you know, like you said, you, wasn't, you didn't really, wasn't in the jury, so. Um, I like clothes, cars. Uh, I took care of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Anybody in my hood, people in jail, uh, my homies at the sea, so who was in jail, each other, they'll tell you, I always show love. I always show love with money. That the money. Drugs and money, you want here, here you go, here you go, look out. Oh, I just come through my hood. When I had my Infinity uh, SUV, actually, actually I just displayed the license plate. I, after all these years, man, my people still had that license plate. I had a picture of myself when I'm jealous of myself on the license plate with the two hot peppers. Um, I yeah. come through there, throwing money at the sunroof, throwing money. So my homegirl, like, oh, it was time for bills, baby, and I just come throwing money at the sunroof. You paid in full. I always, because I'm always going to rob somebody. I'm always going to have a lick. It's drugs being sold. So I always had money. I never was tripping off money. Right. Money was never a problem for me. How quickly did you get active or did you activate? Like, let's say you, it's a regular day. You're just chilling. You're just going to the store and you either see a lick or let's say you see a op and it's like, how quickly did you say, let me get active or did you sit like, let me think about it. Let me, let me process this moment before I just do something dumb. Let me, cause you know, you, you was able to move around. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just thinking you had to have been somewhat, you know, smart enough to say, let me just, Look at the scene. Look at the exits. Let me, you know, let me peep the uh, peep, peep the landscape. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> bro. Listen to me. I promise you. When I was in the fed, I said, think back on it. And now that I be narrated my story, I think back on it. I was young, dumb, and wild. Man, I ain't worried about no exit plan. I, let me get my man first, then I'll worry about trying to get away. You never back then. We didn't think of a uh, thought out plan. <clears throat> I, and, I, and now, I guess God bless me to be here now, so it, I thought I'd play him, I would have gotten caught. Um, no, you know, the, the FBI told me when we first got us, he was like, man, I've been on a force over, it was either 14 or 17 years. He said, you're the first person who phone we had tapped that every day you was committing a crime or every day you was talking to a different female and you ain't said what you say to him. Every day I was trying to rob somebody, every day, bro, I, got, I still got my phone conversations, right, when my phone was tapped. And every day I was trying to do something. Every day I was trying to commit a crime or rob somebody or sell some drugs or buy something. Every day I got up. You think they would have let you get, get away with petty crimes before they ran in? Like, they, yeah, they would let you get away with a little small shit? The law with the feds is this. They're going to have you on investigation for years, right? But the new law is if you go to talking about killing someone, they have to step in and okay. terminate the whole investigation because now the death is on their hands. The families can sue them now. Back then, they would let you kill a person with all that. Oh, we got you locked down tight now. 
But now, when a new law passed, once you go to talk about murder someone, they got to stop it. They got to stop the investigation. Yes, they should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, they should have been on that. I mean, we're going to let one get yeah. by. Like, God damn. God damn. So how can they, how does that work as far as charging you? Can they charge you? Oh, cause conspiracy to commit murder. Okay, I got charged with solicitation to commit murder, right? Okay. Um, they gave me 20 years for that. The reason why, because um, I called my co-defendant and I was like, I said, hey, I said, them people coming down here. I said, when they come down here, we're going to bring them to your house and we're going to kill them. He said, no, we ain't killing people. My man, I got neighbors. I said, well, man, we're going to bring them there. We're going to tie them up. We're going to do them later. And he kept saying no. So by him saying no, by me posing a question to him, they gave me solicitation to commit murder. So that's why I got. But now, if he would have said yes, we would have got conspiracy to commit murder. Okay. And by him saying no, they gave me solicitation because I solicited the question to him. That's crazy. And I got, yeah, I got, I got, uh, that's when I had life plus 20. But I was, I was going to get 10 years, but when they enhanced me for the murders that I was never charged with, that's why they gave me the max 20 years. And real quick, I just got to ask, as you were sitting there with the max and you were facing life and you were sitting there um, and you figured out there's a way for me to get out early, um, was it someone else around you that did it first or like what, like what really, because you already served a lot of time and you were like, man, I got it like this, I could probably get out. Did you ask somebody, can I get out? Like what was your mentality to say, I didn't sat here long enough and I could probably close some cases? All right, I was been working on it. Um, it's known throughout the feds. At one time, they used to let us have our PSI. But in the PSI, it tell you who all snitched what all they did. So then the government outlawed the PSI. You would get in trouble now for having your PSI. PSI have your whole history. Yeah. So I was, I was never one of the ones to check a person's paperwork or if he was a snitch or a rat, run him off the compound. I've never done that because I, I've always told people, never say never. You never know when you would get tired and say, hey, let me go make this phone call. But what freaked me out, um, when I went to this medium back in the day, this guy was on the phone, and he, the other guy was next to him. Back then, we used to just call, call, call. We didn't have, to work. We didn't have minutes on the phone. As long as you had money, you could call as, many, as much as you want. And this guy was standing next to this other guy while the guy was on the phone. He was like, hey, tell him about me. Tell him about me. And the guy started talking. Started talking. Man, tell him about me. And they started talking. So I get on the phone. Like five minutes later, they're upstairs fighting. Oh man, the, he was on the phone with the prosecutor. He going back on somebody's case, and he was trying to get put in the case because they going back on these guys, and he didn't he didn't put him in there, so they fight. I was like what? So then I'm starting to learn about uh, Rule 35. This guy and myself was like, he said, boy, my baby mom just helped me out. I said, what she do? He said, man, she just she just bust a dude with some kilos, five kilos of coke to get me out. I said, he said, man, you don't know about that. He said, man, y'all slow down. I said, no. He said, man, I don't believe you know about Rule 35. I said, watch this. I go call Birdman one day. I said, what happened to you? He said, all right, I said, put him on the phone. I said, yo, you know about Rule 35? I put the phone, dude. He said, nah, what that is? So I said, see, bro, we don't know about that stuff. But they, they hipping me to this while I'm in prison, right? So I said, what the Rule 35 is? He said, man, while you're doing your time, either somebody on the street could go and bust somebody or get some drugs or put some guns or whatever, and your name won't be in the paperwork, they will do the dirt for you, but you'll get the credit. Mm. I said, what? He said, yeah. So mm. I knew they had a thing whereas if you collect a lot of guns and you go to the people, the police department saying, hey, man, I'm getting these guns on the street, you can get credit for this, right? So I tried this. I get a lawyer involved. I said, contact my prosecutor. My prosecutor's name was Matt Coleman. Y'all can look this up. He, actually, he, had to, um, he wound up stepping down, for, resigning from the federal prosecutor because they got in trouble, and the, um, the, the, um, the, the DEA, he was, he was a gangster, too. He used to rob people, arrest people. He'd do all kind of crooked. He's in jail. Chad, his name was Chad Scott. Look him up. Mm. He has got, uh, he found guilty last year. Um, anyway, so I try to get the guns together, get with these crooked DAs, all these people. I get an email. I start to post that email, too. It says, tell Terrence we're not trying to discourage him from cooperating. But However, he was, his case was too violent. His case was uh, surrounded by violence. We need him to go to the police, New Orleans Police Department and help them with some of them homicides. And once he closed those cases, then we'll take that consideration, whatever else he do. That's how it come about for me to tell on the day. Well, the prosecutors can't, well, I, let, me take, let me back up. I had already had got immunity when I first got locked up for some murders, but I didn't give up two murders. That I didn't know about, I didn't want to talk about. Right. So they gave me a life. So now while I'm in the phase, I'm figuring it all out. So now when I go now, I try to be slipping. I got a, I buy guns in my private $100 for AK. You find that in the street, man, give me some guns. I'm going to put them in this house. 
but there's not a body there. Sometimes they want to arrest a body, right? Mm. So he was like, man, tell him, bro, he was too wild. We know he know about a lot of these murders. Go help close some of these murders, and we'll take the consideration. So now you got a cold case. This is what they do. You got people, that, the cold case homicide that's assigned to closing these cases. So now when you close this case, you contact the victim family. Hey, we found out who killed your, your, your son or your daughter. This is what happened. Some family be want to know, but well, did my child suffer? Did my daughter suffer? Or did this, you know, they be, they be asking them questions. Some people in your agreement, you got to apologize to the family. Mm. You know, so it's be a lot of stuff that people don't know that go on with that. And let me say this here for the record, because a lot of people, not a lot, a few people always come with this excuse. Um, if that's the case, you get out, tell on the police, I mean, the dead, see murder would have did it. See murder would have put on sort of stuff. First of all, see murder's in the state, I'm in the federal. If you look at the paper that's posted, it's going to show you the federal rules are 5K1, you tell when you first get locked up, they're going to give you a time cut. Rule 35 is while you're doing your time, you can always come at either your family or somebody or your homie, somebody on the street can commit a, or, I mean, not commit a crime, can get with the law enforcement, tell on somebody, get somebody convicted. As long as you don't accept money from that person, they say, hey, I want Terrence Williams that's in federal custody to get the credit. Your pros as long as your prosecutor agree with it, they will write a motion to the court and cut your time and you just be doing it. You never go back to court. Nobody never know what happened. Yeah. So when they say C. Murder could have did it, no C. Murder couldn't have done that because the state don't play that. If you don't snitch and say, oh, he did it right away, you're going to trial or you're going to plead guilty. That's how our state works, right? Now, another thing. C. Murder wasn't thinking like that back then. You know what I'm saying? People don't, dudes look at it now because they got a chance to sit down and think and get on these uh, interviews. Oh, he could have did it. No, man. People, and, and the moment they bust it, they think about, man, what I did, how I'm going to get out of this. Or who telling them? They're not thinking about, oh, he did it, point the finger on him. But I have a few homies that have done that. But um, people always, a few people have said, um, C. Murder could have put it on Soda Slim. Soda Slim and C. Murder ain't running together. So now what happens is when the people go investigate all this stuff, they're going to probably put it together. Was they there together that night? Or was Soda Slim together that, at that club that night? Was, you know what I'm saying? They're going to, yeah. so, you know, a lot of people just talk just to talk, man. Man. You know, it's crazy. Last thing, man, uh, you know, you watch the movies of the mafias. You see, you know, let's say a hit goes out. Um, their job is to, of course, get rid of the body, clean up the spot, clean up the evidence. It sounds like, you know, back in, you know, y'all area and y'all era, y'all wasn't worried about, you no know, moving no bodies and cleaning up and doing nothing like that. It sounds like y'all just like, sound like y'all just, just let, just, it was random. It's like, all right, then let's, let's run. Yeah, we ain't got time for that, man. <laughs> Listen, you got to keep in mind, the mob, they're organized. They run legal business. So now they can't afford to have that shut down, so they're going to have the cleanup, man, all this. We were hood guys stepping, crushing our victim, and keep it moving. Let the people clean it up. Let the corners all, that's their job. Man. Giving the people job security. Man. Go get that up. Pick that up. All that we're doing is coming back around the scene and make sure they're gone. Yeah, he did. You see that yellow tape up? Yeah, he gone. How, what, what y'all wait till like what? Like a couple of hours? Or? Oh, right there. We spin back, come back around or whatever. You know, because listen, once you commit a crime, people coming out being nosy. Police on the way. So, so police might be in the area somewhere. So now when you come back around there, the crowd out. So it's like, okay, what's, yeah, he did. Do you, you think know, you bro. ever had the heart to chop off, chop up anybody or anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be honest, <laughs> then go eat, go eat breakfast, go eat cereal the next, <laughs> the next morning. Um, man, let's do it like this because I want to definitely celebrate, uh, you know, the fact that your stories um, uh, have gotten you once again about to touch 100k. Mm. Um, you know, you uh, you did your time. Uh, you came out. Uh, you know, they said you had 15 minutes. Five. Oh, they say you had five. Oh, damn. They say you had five minutes of fame. No, let's. <laughs> we ain't gonna throw no subliminal. Birdman told me you got five minutes of fame. So nobody ain't gonna want to keep hearing your story. So when you do your interview, do what you're gonna do, and get on out the way. And I can hear him in that Birdman voice, man. They got five minutes. Oh. You know <laughs> I can. I can hear, here you go, bro. Rub hands like Birdman. Hey. Nah, so yeah. definitely, man. To say that, man, you build a platform. You're actually making a documentary. Again, you got your LLC to shoot, uh, to shoot these movies and uh, you know getting these stories cleared. Um, it's kind of exciting for the future of you, man. Uh, 
going into summer 2023 and what 2024 is going to bring. Um, how excited are you for, you know, this part of your life? And I know it was navigating, getting out and doing all these interviews, but now it's at like, okay, we kind of, we kind of smooth selling right now. We kind of moving around and doing some things, you know, you're still helping the youth, you know, you got That's your nonprofit. Yeah. So you're moving in, uh, you know, God's purpose um, at this moment. And uh, I'm just curious how you feeling about your trajectory going forward. I, great, like Tony the Tiger. Great, <laughs> oh, but like you said, the 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 the, the best feeling that I'm having is um, when I talk to these children because I got a homeboy. He's a uh, he works at this juvenile facility. He's a case manager, and he's speaking to his uh, manager, his boss, whatever. Now for me to come in and talk to the children, you know, the youngsters, the young men, the young teenagers that's in the jail. Now, um, it's a good feeling because now I can put my stories out get my own capital and invest it in what I believe in, what I want to do, my nonprofit. Because, you know, a lot of people think people be playing, be fake. Prime example, like, um, like, my, like my internet ops are uh, ripper and sick with it, right? Yeah. Now they want to come up with a nonprofit. Or we oh. want to help the children. Uh-huh. Yeah, they saying it's now all this is, right? Uh-huh. And I told them, I don't, like, like Jay-Z said, we don't believe we need more people. Because a lot of guys are saying that you got you to lead by example, right? Um, you say, first of all, do you know how to start an LLC? Do you know how to do a nonprofit? That's number one. Um, do you know about your bylaws? Do you know about the board director? You know, it's a lot of stuff that come with nonprofit. Um, and if you're really serious about it, then show us. Like, go out. You don't got to. You don't have to prove a point. But however, in this day and time, people want to see. So you're gonna get your little cell phone and go talk to these children. Take some money out your pocket, but they don't really have money. Um, and go buy something <laughs> to support these children. Feed the children, feed the people, show love. You gotta, with these children, you gotta come bearing gifts you first. Got gotcha. to. You gotta come bearing gifts, bro. Um, they, don't so, wanna hear, they don't wanna just hear no talking. No, they don't wanna hear that bull crap, bro. <laughs> so that's why, I, see, I know, what, I know what the youngsters wanna hear. I know what they want. Bro, right now in my trunk, I can show y'all, we get out here, I got a trunk full of uh, toys for the children. Because, like, you know, I don't celebrate birthdays and holidays, but on my homegirl, what they did, they had a toy giveaway in my project for Christmas. And, um, we had some of the, we had like 500 pieces sent up here because I hit the Dallas area, the Fort Worth area, Arlington area, and we be going to the shelters where I know they got children there, where I know the families need help, and we just giving them out to them, giving it to them, giving it to them, giving it to them, giving them stuff. Um, we go get food. Like I went to this place called Lucy, got Lisa and Lucy. I paid for like 200 pieces of chicken, like 100 something dollars, and went fed the homeless. You know what I'm saying? Um, we filmed it. Um, they got this man, this preacher man, right? He be on this corner. He be, uh, they what he do, he slick with it, right? He have Gatorade, water, or he might have potato chips. He'll be like, you get like a certain amount, but it wants you to donate to the church. So I'm like, man, really I'm paying for this stuff, man. So it'd be two of us in the car, you know, but well, you know what? I say it's two of us, I'm paying, she paying. So, you know, we get a lot. So we get the stuff and we go straight to the shelter, give it away, give it out, give it out. So a lot of these guys be talking about they want to do this, so the stuff easy to do. You know, a lot of them just be playing for the camera too. And um, with me having a voice now, with me having my own platform, and with me having the Real Life Street Star platform, I'm going to call them on it all the time. Amen. Every time. Y'all say y'all doing this. We going to answer. Uh, uh, Mr. Answer right, you lying. <laughs> did, I, did, you, <laughs> did you do it? Where is that? I'm going to put them out on front street. That's my, that's, that's my job now. Amen. My job. Hey, man. Like I said, brother. Every time you come in here, you look a little bit younger. <laughs> we know that we know the pockets full, the people still going. Yeah. Hey man, it's always nice to have a gangster in here, yeah, man. And hey, we salute everything you're doing. Keep going, brother. Hundred K next, finna go two hundred K, three hundred K, all the way to a minute. You gonna be interviewing us next? We gonna be trying to tell you about our stories. Okay, let's get it. Yeah, already. I need it. Well, I'm, hold hey. up, man. Y'all done took my people. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I got it. Okay, uh, okay. I got my beepers, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. They working. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. They be like, who's them people's work? Boom. People still be. Yeah, they still be. Hey, man, this is the yeah. best part of it. Like they already was knowing, you are a real life street star. Yeah. 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 Yeah.